Ezekiel 33. Again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, would be the Hebrews. Say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, a land, he's going to bring it upon Judah, uh, Judah. he's going to bring it upon Egypt, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman. So here comes a battle, here comes war, here comes the warriors, here comes the army. And the people, all right, you're in charge. Keep an eye out. You know, when Paul and Silas and the apostles went out, they were sent out by James and the people in Jerusalem. They laid their hands on them and they sent them out. If when he sees the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet. Today would be uh, the, the sirens, air raid, nuclear blast, weather alert, and warn the people. That's his job. Then whosoever hears the sound of the trumpet, and take is not warning. And it's funny because, you know, they blast these, this is a test of, of, the, of the mercy broadcast system. This is, they do it so often that people ignore it. And I had, we had the time in Connecticut, in Groton, my wife and I, we brought our car to the transmission place. And we were watching the television while they were working on the car. And the, the, New, the, the, the emergency broadcast came on. You know what I mean? It was kind of weird because there was no, this is a drill, this is a test. And later on when we got home and we turned the news on, it come to find out that somebody accidentally hit the button, the wrong button. And what they were amazed to the fact was it was not broadcast as a, as a test, and nobody did nothing. Here is that nuclear warning. Here is that emergency broadcast warning. And this is there was no, this was a test, and people ignored it. That's what it's talking about here. If the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. So we hear news. Here comes a hurricane. And this has happened in Connecticut and in Florida where we live. Here comes a, a hurricane. Well, no matter what character. And there are people, oh, we're going to have a hurricane party. We're going to stay in our house. We're not going to move or tornadoes. People say, we're not going to move. And then the storm or the event comes. Somebody gets injured or somebody dies. In the eyes of the Bible, you were warned. It's on your head. When somebody warns you of an event and you don't take action, whatever it is, according to the Bible, that's your fault. So when we tell you and give you a gospel track, when we preach to you, when we open the Bible with you, when you hear that Jesus saved, when you hear to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, and you don't take warning, and you die and you go to hell, it's not God's fault. It's not the man, and it doesn't have to be a preacher, it could be the Christians out there evangelizing, it is not their fault. As a matter of fact, the Bible says they'll probably stand up and judge you at the great white throne judgment. And this is this is not salvation. This is about a, a pending war. And it also has to do with salvation. He heard the sound of the trumpet. He heard it. And took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. So, okay. 
I'm an evangelist. I'm a street preacher. I try to get the gospel out. Here is somebody, and I give them a gospel track. I, I tell them about Jesus. I tell them about hell. Whatever it is that God will have me to do. And that person rejects and rejects other witnesses and rejects other gospel tracts and just rejects the word of God. And he dies and he goes into hell. I'm cleared. Now, as I said the other night, I believe, and I can be wrong, I have witnessed to everybody in my known family. And there are people in hell today of my family. I did what I should have done. I told them the gospel. I gave them the gospel. Track. I told them what the Bible says. I planted or I watered. There is no condemnation. There is no threat of me if I told them. So, but, gotta watch out for the butts in the Bible. If the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I acquire at the watchman hand. So, let's put it to Christians. We are told to go into the world and preach the gospel. You don't tell people the gospel. You don't tell your family about the gospel. You don't try to witness to your co-workers. You don't tell your neighbors. And death comes and end up in hell. You are going to be held accountable by God. And it doesn't say, oh, invite them to church. I invite them to church. That's not Bible doctrine. Nowhere can you see anywhere in the book of Acts, or Paul in his letters, or Peter in his letters, or James in his letters, or John in his letters, or the Gospels, or Jude, or Hebrews. We don't know who wrote Hebrews. Nobody does it say, come to church. Preach the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you don't tell them, or if you have to say this prayer, or you wrongfully go down the Romans road, which Paul never went down the Romans road, and he wrote the Romans road. So they put it. And they die in their sins and go to hell. God will call you to the stand. They will come out at the great white throne judgment and point their fingers at you and say, why didn't you tell them? Jesus, why didn't they tell me? And Jesus will turn to them and say, well, why didn't you tell them? I want to be their friend. I want to be a good employee. I didn't want to upset my family's uh, uh, you know, family reunion. How many people, we just had Christmas. Oh, here he goes again. Sat down with the family, opened the presents, had meals, whatever they did on Christmas with their family. How many told their family about Jesus Christ? And yet those very same Christians, you know, it's about the birthday of Jesus. Did you tell your family about the resurrection, about the death and the burial of Jesus Christ? Or did you just hold that precious little baby that grew up and went to the cross and suffered and died and was buried in accordance with Scripture, was buried and came to life three days and three nights, and he's coming back angry. You know, if the rapture will happen right now and Daniel's uh, Daniel's seventh week and, and the time of Jacob's trouble, seven year tribulation, if it happened right now, chances are some of your family at the end of the seven years is going to be alive when Jesus comes and will be one of the goats. Don't think, you know, oh, I'm saved, that's okay. No, you're not going to keep eating. You're not going to survive at the, at the judgment seat of Christ. You're going to suffer loss. And then your family, your co-workers, and everybody you knew will be pointing fingers at you at the great white throne judgment. As you go off into New Jerusalem, and they go off into the lake of fire that burneth forever. So thou, son of man, 
I have set thee a watchman in the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. Look at that. From God. You better be careful. God is angry. You better be careful. COVID-19 and everything going. God is angry. But God is long suffering, not willing that any should perish. He, he wants you to repent. And he wants the Christian to tell them to repent. Not, oh, we don't get your shot. It's a 666 in the shot. Oh, the government's trying to take your freedom away. Don't get the shot. Don't get the shot. No, you're supposed to be preaching. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And obey the government and get the shot. Because your government told you to get the shot. Romans 13 says you're to obey the powers that be. And God says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Get saved and get the shot. That's what Christians are supposed to be preaching. You know, Jude speaks about those that, that speak evil of dignitaries. That's you, Christian. It's all, you know, they're, they're, I read today, they're trying to they're trying to blame President Biden for the, the $1.29 store now. And you'll stand before God, Christian, and you'll be at fault. But that's that was a little extra message. That was 25 cents plus shipping and handling. Okay? When I say unto the wicked, when I say unto the wicked, and you are to say to the wicked, in the mouth of God. When you tell them the gospel, you are speaking by God, through God, the Holy Spirit. O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. So you are telling them about death. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, you don't tell him about death, you don't tell him about hell, you don't tell him about Jesus Christ. The wicked man shall die in his iniquity, die in his sins. That happens today. But his blood will I require at thy hand. You will give everybody. Listen, even I pass people up. I come across people, and the Holy Spirit will say, hey, give them a gospel track, and I don't have gospel track, or I'll size them up, or go over there and say something to that person, and I don't do it. I will be held accountable at the judgment seat of Christ, and I will be given an account at that person that goes off in the lake of fire at the, at the Great White Throne Judgment. I'm not perfect. Never said I was. Never will be. But I do have children. And I'm not talking about my daughter. And I'm not talking about my son. I'm talking about people as watering and as planting the seed. Got saved through God using me. They're my spiritual children. Paul said about Timothy, you're my son. No, Timothy was not Paul's son. But in the Lord he was. There are Christians out there that, oh, you know, I got all the children, I got all the grandchildren, I got great-grandchildren, but they ain't got no spiritual children, and when they get to heaven, no one will be waiting for them. When I get to heaven, there'll probably be people up there waiting to thank me. When I get to heaven, I'll probably be waiting for people to come that will thank me. And I got people to thank me because I got saved, and they told me. Too many Christians today, they don't have spiritual children. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, there's repenting. Turn, that's repenting. If he do not turn, repent from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, die in his sins. But thou hast delivered thy soul, not their soul, thy soul. So again, if I if I tell someone and they reject, someone tells him and they reject and they die in their sin, they go to hell. But hey, I did all I could. I planted or I watered. That's what God told me to do. If he if if you warn the wicked of his way, he didn't say anything, but he didn't tell Ezekiel to fight him to the temple. Matter of fact, the temple may have been destroyed by now. I'm not sure the, the years. He said, tell them their wickedness. Tell them of death.
Therefore, O son of man, speak. Speak. Where's this? Where to speak unto the house of Israel? Thus ye say, thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, the wages of sin is death. How, listen, when Paul writes, the only thing he has is the Old, Old Testament. You're going to see the Old Testament quoted by Paul. You're going to see the Old Testament referenced by Paul because he didn't have Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. He didn't have Romans. He didn't have Galatians, Ephesians because he didn't write them yet. How shall we then live? That's a good question. That's the same question that fifthly in jail. What must I do to be saved? There it is. There's Acts 16 in Ezekiel 33. Say unto him, as I live, saith the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. There's God's not willing that any should perish. I think Peter said that. But that the wicked man turn from his way and live. Man, that's throughout all the writings of Paul. Turn ye. What was it Felix that told Paul, he said, almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Paul's like, uh, not only you, but everybody in this room. Turn ye, repent. Turn ye, repent from your evil ways. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? And this is a street preacher, evangelist, knocking on doors, street preaching, passing out gospel, just opening the book. No, they, and they, and the, the, in the back of your mind, when you're witnessing to people, you're saying, why will they not listen? Why will they not get right? Therefore thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, Hebrews, Jews, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. You're, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and if you're righteous, that ain't going to get you by. You know, that's, that's what Job was relying on. Job was riding on, riding on his self-righteousness. That young rich man that came to Jesus, what must I do to, to go to heaven? Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt honor the parent. He said, I've done all that. He says, all right, what about coveting? What about giving up your riches and come follow me? <laughs> that guy was right. Listen, him and Job were the most righteous men in, G in the Bible outside of Jesus Christ. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day he turneth from his wicked. The day he repents of his sins, they're not going to be charged to him. That righteous man in his righteousness, and if he's still got iniquity, that ain't going to help you. But that wicked man, if he repents and, and, and repents to God and gets right, he turned it from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteousness be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinned. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts in his own righteousness and commit his iniquity, all the righteous shall not be remembered. Now we're in the Old Testament, remember. So that righteous man, he's righteous and he's good before God and he goes out and steals. He goes out and bears fault witness. He goes out and commits adultery. He, he transgresses against his parents. He gets himself an idol. He gets himself an image. He has pagan holidays like Christmas and Easter. They had pagan holidays of Easter and, and Christmas. They weren't called as such. Mary was not Mary. She was Asterisk. Then Asterisk became Ishtar. And then Ishtar became Mary. And the guy did, uh, I read the thing the other day, well, you know, it, Jeremiah 
chapter t uh, 10 can't be the Christmas tree because there were no Christmas trees. Yes, there were the trees. They just weren't called Christmas trees. The old log and all that. But for his iniquity that he has committed, he shall die for it. The wages of sin is death. So don't pat yourself on the back and go and sin. This is the Old Testament. And Christians die for their sins today. Again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. The wages of sin is death. If he turn from his sin, repents, and do that which is lawful and right, there's work salvation. That's not the church aid. If the wicked restore a pledge, works. Giveth again that which he has robbed, works. Walk in the statues of life, works. Without committing an iniquity, works. He shall surely live, he shall not die. Guess what? They all died. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. None of his sins that he commits shall be mentioned unto him. He has done that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live. They all died. Somewhere along the line, they failed. Moses failed. Joshua failed. Mary failed. Paul failed. Peter failed. James failed. When the righteous turns from his righteousness and commit iniquity, he shall even die thereby. Wait a minute. Verse 17. Yet the children of the people shall say, The way of the Lord is not equal, but as for them, their way is not equal. You recognize that? We did that back in Ezekiel 18. God's people are charging God with, you're not equal. And what do we have today? In 2021, equal rights. And to the blank with God and what he feels. We don't care what the Bible says. We don't care what God says. Men are women and women are men and black are white and white is black and the children have rights and We are gay, proud, and happy of it. We don't care what the Bible has to say about it. Even modern Bibles, the NIV, remove sodomites. Because God's so cruel. How can God be cruel since a nice group of people? That's saying God's not, God's not equal. Well, what about the baby? What about the destruction? What about the loss? All right, what about uh, Planned Parenthood? What about the selling of alcohol ruining people's lives? What about the sale of tobacco killing people's lungs? What about the government and the media and Christians and everybody in religion lying to everybody about this COVID-19? What is the truth? You got the news media saying one thing. You got the health people saying this thing. You got the politicians saying that thing. You got Christians telling you this thing. You got religions telling you that thing. What is the truth? I tell you what the truth is. It's in the Bible. What's the Bible say? If your president says get the vaccine, go get the vaccine. I'm gonna this week or next week. I'm gonna me and my daughter. We're gonna go get the booster shot because Biden said get the booster shot. And if I die from the booster shot, I'll go up before God. God say the powers that be was not against the scriptures. And God be like, well, I wanted you to die. I wanted you home. And if I get the booster shot and I wake up the next morning and I wake up the next morning, I'm going to do to the will of God to the best of my ability. And I'm going to try to warn people about hell. Until the day that God does take me home. Or raptures me. Which I'll be going home anyway. 
He's being taught, well, we're losing our freedom. We're losing our freedom. You're not using your freedom to go out and do what God told you to do. You're going to be paying for that. When the righteous turns from his righteousness and commit his iniquity, backslider, he shall even die thereby. Again, the wages of sin is death. A Christian can die, Paul tells us, when you wrongfully take part of the Lord's Supper wrongfully. You can get sick or you can go to sleep. And there are an act of Christians, by God, they died because of their sins. I can think of many Christians who have died of lung cancer because they smoke cigarettes. I can know, I, I don't, well, I don't know personally, but there are Christians out there who have died because they committed adultery against their spouse. But if the wicked turn from his wickedness and do that which is lawful and right, he shall live thereby. They died. But it says Lazarus and all those in Abraham's bosom slept. Paul says Christians at the rest, those that are asleep shall be caught up. You see, in actuality, when the body dies, the, the body dies, but not the soul. And there are be souls that their bodies will be joined to them later. They will go to heaven by doing what God told them to do in their dispensation. And there will be souls that will be joined to their bodies that will go off in the lake of fire forever because they did not do what God told them to do in their dispensation. There were Old Testament saints that arose from the grave when Jesus was resurrected. Yet ye say, and we read this again, Ezekiel 18, that the, the way of the Lord is not equal. O ye house of Israel, I will judge you every one after his way. And Revelation 20 says, and the books were opened, they were judged by their works. You know that, and I heard a pastor tell me I was full of it. You know, there'll be unsaved, uh, excuse me. Yeah, there'll be unsaved at the Great White Throne. You know, there'll be saved Old Testament saints at the Great White Throne Judgment. Because the Old Testament saints don't go to the judgment seat of Christ. They're not Christians. Though that pastor told me they're Christians in the Old Testament. You're wrong. And the books are open and says, whosoever name was not found in the, in, in the book of in the book of life, not the land's book of life, but in the book of life, was cast in the lake of fire and burned forever. What about those who have their name in the book of life? And they've been judged by their works because they are under a work salvation of the Old Testament and the law. You okay, your name's in the book. Okay, come on over. There will be saved people. Abel will be at the at the great white throne judgment, but he ain't going to hell. Yeah, I know that's a heresy teaching. Uh, oh well, don't believe the Bible. I don't care. <laughs>